Welcome back everyone to Mirus, the world of mice, crickets, shrimp, and bees. If you are new here, I recommend you watch the full series here in the iCard in the top right corner of your screen. Mirus, the world of mice, is a seed world. The seed world is an alien world seeded with Earth life by some intelligent organism. In the first part of this episode, we went over the three biomes of the Northern Hemisphere. This episode will follow the remaining four biomes, the drylands, Fabulu, Scalana, and the ocean. The first of which is the drylands. The apex predator of the drylands is a green Edomus descendant, the previous apex predator of the plains. They couldn't compete with the Snow King in the north, so they traveled from the receding plains to the drylands and began hunting kites. These chitin crackers, or Edomus macroinsectivora, have evolved extremely strong jaws to break the kite's strong armor. These creatures are sadly robust, and they have large ears and an enormous tail that stores fat similar to the hump of a camel. One creature follows chitin cracker from the distance. This creature is not one, but a bachelor group of three, and they follow the chitin cracker as it kills a large kite. The predator eats its prey and leaves, and the three creatures sneak up and gorge upon the fresh corpse, the impenetrable armor already broken by the chitin cracker. These hyena rats, or Belmus malasmanu, are scavengers who followed their green cousins from the drylands to the plains. And as their green cousins evolved, they did too, gaining an extraordinarily large ears to defend against the hot sun and soft black paws to prevent damage on the hot, rocky surface. They have also evolved a mohawk as a mating display. These scavengers follow large predators like the chitin cracker and feed off the scraps they leave behind. One offshoot of the giant forest kite is the sailed kite, or Urbfalxilinetum. These creatures have evolved a thin membrane between their horns that cools them off like a sail of Dimetrodon. Their horn mandibles have become more serrated to cut the thick bushes. They split off after the kite evolved their large respiratory system, allowing them to gain sizes of up to five feet long. Due to the vast, dry, barren lands, many creatures don't eat every day, and food is rare. So one small cricket has evolved to keep its food alive, becoming a parasite. This microtrunk, or Tranquilis minimis, has evolved their trunk into a rostrum-like appendage that lets it feed off the blood of its host. They use their claws to hook onto their host, and that allows them to stay for longer, and feed for longer. Away from the dry biomes of the mainland, we go through the ocean to the shores of Skilana, where we see small crab-like organisms scurrying along the shore. And then a creature comes out of the water. This colossal organism pulls itself out of the water with its large fins and scoops up the small creatures with its mouth and the sand filters in between its two bony protrusions. This shore colossus, or Colossidae pylorus, is a massive creature at almost 10 feet long and it's the smallest and most derived member of the Colossus family. These creatures have evolved their fins into pseudo limbs that pulls them along shore, along with large swimmerettes that do the same. They are also called sand sharks due to their sharp dorsal ridge. These shore colossuses have evolved to hold water in their lungs for as long as an hour. They mainly use their antennae to feel the beach for sand shrimp rather than using their own eyes. 
carcinization is when crustaceans evolve into a crab-like form while not being crabs themselves. It has its own name because it has happened many, many times on Earth. One lineage of land shrimp split off while their jaws were evolving, and the same limb pair that would become jaws in the true land shrimp became claws to manipulate food, such as algae that washes up on shore. These sand shrimp, or Squilinepa canceris, are a keystone of the Fablu, Scalana, and any ecosystem on the shores of Miris. Since scarabees lay their eggs in rotten wood, it is easy for them to spread through driftwood. One of these drifting events brought scarabees to Scalana. The Scalanian scarabees are a subspecies of Apiscaranus elytra that have become a carnivore to eat the snow shrimp. The snow shrimp, or Squipulmorino, is a land shrimp that has evolved hair, similar to the hair of spider crabs. This hair is used to survive the cold, southern, snowy half of Scalana, since the scarabee can't survive in the cold. These snow shrimp go into the snow for safety. However, while they're in the northern part of the island, the snow shrimp will get a more brown coat for camouflage. These grass eaters are the only herbivore in all of Scalana. Now we travel further west to the shores of Fablu, slightly tamer, a small pig-sized creature forges on the tides. Feeding on sand shrimp and algae, this blue parmus or parmus rosus is a species of parmus that has become semi-aquatic. They have webbed feet for swimming and have evolved blue fur for camouflage. Another small creature on the blue is the parmun or parmus lepus. This creature has a niche similar to that of a rabbit. These creatures eat small shrubs and plants and are often found near tree parmuses for protection. The tree parmus or parmus arabormanus has evolved to be very large to eat the leaves of the glade trees that have evolved on Pebble. To do this, they go on their hind legs and use their front limbs to grab the tree, stabilizing the creature, allowing them to eat the leaves more effectively. The main herbivore of Fablu is a very large, almost bison-sized life form known as the parkow or Parmus altesco de vaca. This creature has evolved a similar behavior to their larger ancestors, becoming large but not condensed herds of up to 30 individuals. These creatures are the largest animal on Fablu, weighing almost 1,700 pounds. A large male parkow silently eats its dinner of grasses and shrubs. It hears rustling in the grass, but seems nothing but a stray leaf blowing in the wind. This, however, was not a leaf, but a leaf tail. This is an ambush as a large but slender creature emerges from the grass and leaps on the parkow's back. The predator sinks its claws deep into the back of the beast as the parkow tries to kick and shake it away. The predator uses its long maw as a guillotine to decapitate the parkow. This deadly predator is none other than a leaf tail. The leaf tail, or Flumer terenum, is a mouse alligator descendant that found its way to Feblu and filled the empty niche of apex predator, becoming more terrestrial. They have tiger-striped patterns to blend in the long grasses. The leaf tails get their name from the leaf-like growth on their tail that used to be finned, however is now used for camouflage, appearing like a leaf. The leaf tail is a great mother to its young, taking them on hunts, but their loving nature has also been taken advantage of. The descendants of pygmy edemuses these scrap puppies, or Edemus infans mimicus, has evolved to mimic young leaf tails. They have perfected the pattern of the leaf tail and are hard to distinguish even by me. When a leaf tail has from two to four pups, 
the scrap puppy will silently capture one of the pups and gain their scent. They then eat the pup and return to their mother. They are then fed scraps as if they were the pups themselves, giving them their nature, scrap puppies. To tell the difference between a real and a fake pup is the ears. Only scrap puppies have ears. The leaf tails lost their ears when they were aquatic. Another species of Volaris is the sea snatcher, or Volaris gavia. This creature is found all over the coasts of Fablu and the eastern coasts of Osiris. These creatures get their name from the fact that they snatch shrish out of the water with their eagle-like talons. These creatures have long wings like an albatross that allows them to fly very long distances. They have also evolved forward-facing eyes to scan the water for shrish and aim perfectly. These creatures spend most of their life in the air around the sea and only come to Fablu to nest. Due to the end of the Verdamarian period and death of the Green Sea, the giant whale-sized mammoths went extinct. And in their place are equally large filter feeding shrimp another member of the new colossus family this shrimp can grow up to 20 feet long they use the skin between their mandibles to filter out anything smaller than plankton allowing them to swim along the surface of the water and get loads of plankton in their filter before eating them while the name Colossus Chomper may seem like this creature predates Colossuses, they are in fact only four feet long. Instead, they take a play out of the Cookie Cutter Shark's book. The Colossus Chomper, or Caridia mala parasitis, takes tiny bites out of the Colossus, but doesn't kill them. This gives them food without killing the source of it. The Colossus Slayer, however, does kill colossuses. These 10 feet long torpedoes with jaws hunt the blue colossus and rarely even their smaller cousins. The colossus slayer, or Mermus giganvenator, is not too dissimilar to their ancestors, but it has a very key difference besides size, and that is they hunt in packs. These packs consist of two to three individuals, and it significantly increases their chances of a successful hunt. One species of shrish has evolved to swim in large schools of up to several thousand shrish. These schooling shrish, or Caridia pistris magnum sensus, all swim in tandem due to their antennae that have evolved into a pseudo-lateral line that allows them to sense water current and the position of other shrish. One mousigator lineage has become more aquatic, the Magar, or Flumer Shrishkavora. This creature has evolved to hunt schooling shrish using their long faces, like a gar or the Spinosaurus dinosaur. These Magar have reduced their posterior limbs to allow them to swim much better in the depths a primitive creature searches for small munchers on the sea floor this creature is the blind colossus or colossus this creature kept its original niche but has evolved larger antennae that are so efficient at finding prey the colossus has lost their vision entirely the blind colossus also has a larger shovel to get more munchers to munch on. That is all I have for today, and thank you guys so much for 200 subscribers. The sub count has literally doubled since last video. Thank you so much for watching, and better yet, subscribing. Have a good day, and I'll see you next time.